For six years of my life, I wondered to myself this one question. Why is my music so shit? Then one day, magically, I came to the realization of one thing. It's because I don't know how to mix my music. Now, listen, mixing your music is the bread and butter to making good music without mixing your music or knowing how to mix your music is always going to sound like shit which is why in this video i'm not going to gatekeep anything i'm not going to hide anything from you and i'm not going to hardcore sell you on anything or tell you that my anything is the only way you can get good at mixing in this video instead of doing that i'm going to show you every single thing you need to know to make a good mix so before i actually teach you anything of course you need to know what it sounds like to have a bad and a good mix so the first thing i'm gonna do is record some vocals right now not mix them at all show you what they sound like and then i'm gonna mix them with my vocal preset which by the way you don't need to buy my vocal preset i'm just using it as an example of what a good mix sounds like so if you really want to save your time i i really do recommend you get my vocal preset it's in the description it's it's so fucking easy you can save yourself all of the time of having to learn to mix i'm gonna show you how simple it is so literally all i need to do once i have this preset is is just drag it on and then i can start recording my vocals so i'll be right back i'm gonna record some vocals and then show you before and after okay so i have some vocals laid down here just just one layer just a lead vocal i'm gonna show you what it sounds like this is with no effects if the money wasn't coming then all the people here would leave do you know how hard it is to stomach and now as simple as this i'm literally just going to click this button right here and it's going to put on all the effects from my vocal preset that you can get in the description and this is what it sounds like. if the money wasn't coming then all the people here would leave do you know how hard it is to stomach that they toss you out whenever they play so there you go, that is unmixed versus mixed. So now I'm gonna get into how you mix your vocals. So the first and probably most important plugin that you need to have, by the way, you cannot get away with having free of this plugin. This is something you will need to buy or get free. I'm not sure how you'd get it for free at all, but I'm sure you could if you theoretically tried. You can't use the FL Studio version of this. It's just so fucking dog shit. You can't do it. it the, the effect is auto tune. Okay, so you need to invest in either Waves, Metatune, or Antrez auto tune. Those are the three auto tunes I would recommend. You cannot use Pitcher. I'm sorry, but yeah, you just can't do it. The way that autotune works is essentially you have to input a key and a scale into the autotune to tell the autotune what key your vocals need to be on and it will do its best job of putting your vocals to the key. So in this video I'm not going to explain all of these different knobs because I have videos on autotune already which you can watch after this video. So the beat that I'm using right now is in the key D major. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to route my vocals to the second track and I'm going to start putting these effects that I'm showing you on so you can hear what they sound like before and after. So like I said we're on D major. I'm not going to do any crazy tweaking or anything like that. I'm just going to keep it normal and show you how it sounds. So the detune of this is 439 watch my autotune tutorial if you don't know what the fuck I'm talking about by detune or anything else in autotune I, I explained it perfectly in that video so this is what it's going to sound like just with autotune on if the money wasn't coming then all the people here would leave do you know how hard it is to stomach and of course we can tweak some things we can turn the flex tune up and this is gonna make it sound a little bit less robotic so this is what it may sound like if we modify it a little bit if the money wasn't coming then all the people here would leave do you know how hard it is to stomach now, the second effect that we want to learn is equalization or EQ. So the EQ that pretty much every every person that I know uses is EQ2. So Fruity Parametric EQ2, you just add it right under the auto-tune. This is how we modify the waves of our vocals. So every single sound in music, in life, in everything, everything, is through sound waves. So these sound waves are made up of frequencies. So a frequency is just a specific part of a sound wave. So when I talk, it's gonna fill up this entire graph that you see here. If, if you, you look, look at my, my vocals, vocals like, like this, this, you can, you can see, see all of these different, different 
frequencies, frequencies that, that are showing, showing on, on the graph. graph. And, and I can, I can within the EU, I can, I can modify, modify these. these. So, so if, if I see this, see this one, one right here, here that's lower, I can, I can turn, turn it up. And now it sounds, sounds like, like that. that. So an EQ is just a way that we modify the specific frequencies in the sound waves of our vocals or beat. So what I like to do with EQing is I like to take an EQ band, scroll down on my mouse wheel, and I like to scroll up, and this will show me in a vocal where the bad sounds are so let me listen if the money wasn't coming then all the people here would leave do you know how hard it is to stomach that they toss you out whenever they play so the next thing that we need to add onto our vocals is a compressor a compressor is taking the vocals that we have and looking at them so if we look at them you can see that right here this is lower than like right here and in a listener's perspective this just basically means that this part right here is quieter than this part right here it's pretty obvious and for example this part is quieter than here so what a compressor does is it essentially takes these parts of the vocals and it puts them down to here while also taking these very low parts and putting them up to here. So my webcam just died, which is fucking, this is a terrible video. So the way that this works is all of your volumes are going to a certain dB, which is right here. You can see them. And this threshold is telling the compressor when to kick on. So if your vocals are going up to the 12 right here in level and your threshold is negative 14, considering that it's going above 14 and it's hitting 12, it's going to kick the compressor on. Now, the ratio is how much the compressor is actually going to kick on. This is a completely mathematical equation that you really don't need to worry about. I just turn mine to, depending how much compression you want, probably around four to six is a good amount. But depending on the genre that you're making, it obviously depends. For stuff like Deftones or Quanic or anyone that's making like shoegaze noise where you're whispering or getting really quiet and then loud screaming. You wanna compress a lot more versus rap where it's kind of all consistent volume, but you still obviously need compression for all of your vocals. If the money wasn't coming, then all the people here would leave. Do you know how hard it is to stomach? And the next thing we're gonna add on is a de -esser. So a de is something that you use to get rid of the S's in your vocals. Now, the reason we need a specific plugin for this is because S's are just a very common thing. So I guess they just decided to make it itself a plugin. You can't really use an EQ because if you take an EQ in the area that S's are, you can kind of fuck up the sound of your vocals. So let's find the S's with our EQ and then let's turn them down and let's see how it sounds. It's the She's right there. That they toss you. So that's where it sounds terrible, but now let's see what it sounds like if I just turn it down. You, know how hard it is to stomach, that they you can kind of tell that it gives that little muffled sound, so we don't want to do that. So this is why they created a de -er because that's a very common sound that just hurts your ears. So instead, what they decided to do was have a threshold knob on just essentially an EQ that does what I just showed you, but it has a threshold so that it's not constantly on. So anytime you have those S's in your vocals, it's gonna get rid of it, but it's not gonna muffle your entire sound while it's at it. Do you know how hard it is to stomach? As you can tell by this a 10, that's when it's turning down the S's. That's all it is. Now, these are all the core, I would say, four core things that you need. Now I'm gonna just run through a couple of basic effects that you can use to spice up your vocals and make them sound good. The first thing is reverb. Reverb is a way to widen your vocals out throughout headphones. You can't really hear it on the phone, you can a little bit, but it's kind of like if you were to scream scream into a cave. That's essentially what it is. The way that I like to tweak mine is just turn the separation up. Separation is how much it's spreading out throughout your headphones from left to right. I like to turn up this low cut because I, I don't like reverbing my low ends. Low ends are very harsh and get muddy with reverb. So this is what it sounds like. So what I do is I come down here because obviously it sounds like way too much reverb. So this is the knob that you use to turn the effect down so now let's see what it sounds like if the money wasn't coming 
than all the people. The next thing that you can add is going to be saturation. So you can use Sound Goodizer if you're using just stock FL plugins, but I use Fresh Air. It's it's free, so you might as well just go get it. It takes 15 minutes to get it, and then it gives you these two knobs to modify the very high ends or the mid ends of your vocals with saturation. Saturation just makes your vocals sound brighter. It makes them stand out more. It makes the good sounds in your vocals sound better. People hear what leaves to you know how hard it is to stomach. The next thing you can add is a noise gate. So this kind of falls into like the, the starter effects. You kind of always want this on. What this does is it takes the static in your vocals and it gets rid of them. I'm going to show you in my actual preset. So this is me talking with my preset. As you can tell, when I don't talk, there's no static. The way that I do that is as you can see over here there's a noise gate this is the release knob this is how long it takes for my vocals to fade out into nothing so now it's instant now it fades out i like to have it like right here you don't want it too much to the left because it'll just sound unnatural the next thing you need to do is turn the gain all the way down this is telling the limiter to get rid of all of the signal if i have it like this now i have static now i have 50 percent static and now i have none the last knob is threshold and this is telling fo when to cut this signal out so it's going to be very hard now because my threshold is higher and now if it's right here then it's cutting out the perfect amount of static because the static is lower volume versus my vocals are a higher volume by the way it is very hard to talk while also hearing myself but yeah now i don't have any noise gate because the threshold is all the way down so you can just look at where your static is here or here and just turn it right above that now i have no static no static so yeah, I mean, if you're following along with this video and you copied everything, these are just the basic things that you need to make a good sounding fucking mix. If you're trying to copy someone else's mix that's advanced, I recommend probably asking for help from someone. You can ask in the comments and I may respond to you, but yeah, 